attack, the harder it is. Oh, yeah, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Officially at the Bronx Zoo, which I haven't been here since like grade school, being a New York native. This guy, how's long has it been for you? Nine years? Nine yeah. Years? So nine years for him, forever for me. But we have the new Nikon 400 millimeter F4.5 VRS for the Z mount. I got the new firmware for the new Nikon Z9. And we got some pretty new Lexar cards that we want to try out as well, right? Yeah. And this supposed to be the fastest out at the time of the recording of this video. So we're gonna try all that stuff out. Where better than at the Bronx Zoo, where I can try all different types of subject matter from where are we going, gorillas, giraffes. What do you want to do? What, what are you feeling? What do you feel? I don't know. We 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 have a hard job sometimes. <laughs> I will say I am pretty amped to try out the new firmware because it actually is leaning on some improvements for autofocus with animal tracking. So it just seems like the stars align for us on this one. Let's uh, let's see what we can find. Let's see what we can shoot. So let's talk about this Nikon 400 millimeter F4.5. As you can see for a 400, pretty compact, right? And it actually feels pretty lightweight to me, but more importantly, it feels balanced. Meaning when I hold the camera, I don't really feel like I have a lot of weight off that front end, which you get with that telephotos usually. And Nikon's telling me it's because the elements kind of start more towards the back or most of the elements I should say are more towards the back of the lens. You have a 95 millimeter thread in the front for a filter. Uh, it is also coated in that front element. We're looking at a fluoride coating so it can shed off water if I was out here in the rain, but it, it is a nice humid balmy day here in the Bronx Zoo, but no rain so far, so I can't really tell you about that. However, I can tell you the nano crystal coating on there, which I am used to in other Nikon lenses, takes down a lot of things like ghosting, flaring, aberration, stuff like that. So there is some really nice image fidelity coming out of this lens, but be the real hero to me on this lens is really the compactibility of it. It's a nimble 400 millimeter. You know, we're out here at the zoo and we're looking at a lot of people with long lenses that look like they're having a really hard time carrying on those long lenses. I'm not finding that here. So I'm really enjoying that aspect of it full on, full out. So I'm gonna also say the two things that really stood out to me were the minimum focusing distance being only eight feet was a really helpful when you have animals that are coming like right up to you or if you're walking around you go, I gotta get that right there. It's not like, oh man, it's too close. If anything, I might be too zoomed in as a 400, but that wasn't the case too often. Also, the, the focusing speed was really there for me. I'm not, I never felt like it was taking forever to get to a point or going from where it was to where I needed to be. If I shot something close up and then went to go something far away, it wasn't like, oh no, it's not gonna get there. No, it was there and ready for me. So I, I think the, the really key point to a lens like this is that you will actually use it, that you will carry it around, that it will be in your bag more often, that you will use that telephoto lens that isn't such a pain to carry around. If the gear isn't on you, you don't use it, right? And the gear isn't easy and, and wieldable, you definitely don't use it. So as a guy who doesn't shoot wildlife a lot or even long lenses that much, uh, I'm finding this to be a really great experience overall. The thing that I'm finding with this is it's got a lot of challenges when you're stuck in a place like a zoo where you can't actually get beyond certain parameters, right? That's no secret. But things like the gorillas that were behind gorilla snot covered glass that was double pane, it still was able to keep focusing, keep going with it. Yes, I was pushing the ISO a little bit. 4.5 isn't the widest aperture, but I still got a nice shallow look to the images when it was showcasing the bouquet behind the animal. So you weren't getting a busy background where it was distracting or taking away from the subject you were still getting a good separation from the environment, which is what you want for your viewer to really focus in on, no, no pun intended, on your subject. So we'll walk around here, we were able to shoot a lot of cool animals. We had a really, really golden fish in a barrel moment with an eagle and a condor, which was awesome. And the focus stayed in between the feathers of the wings of the condor on the eye of the condor. I was shocked and the shot is awesome in my opinion, but again, it's my shot, so maybe I'm biased. But also other things as well the high tall grass, the weeds, the glass that was in the way, the 
fencing around the places the animals were in. You know, all this stuff is stuff the lens has to work through and work past, and the bouquet, meaning the shallow depth of field has to be there for it to just obliterate something like the wire in front of the lens wasn't an issue. So when you think about this lens, you think the trade-off might be the 4.5, but I'd argue it really kind of isn't. You're actually getting a lot benefits out of it when they are able to make it this small and compact and have it on you. If I'm shooting with it, I'm shooting, right? If I'm gonna go for a shallower depth of field and have a bigger lens, maybe it's not on me and I don't even shoot at all. You know, so that's kind of my mentality. Let me know down below if that's your mentality. But uh, again, I'm not a wildlife photographer, so you're welcome to let me know how I did. I'm sure you're gonna do that anyway. Let's go take a look around the rest of the zoo and see what we can find. One of the things that's quick to limit you with telephoto lenses is the minimum focusing distance. And this has 8.2 feet as the minimum point of focusing. So that's actually really good for telephoto. I was finding here in the zoo, things like the seals that were moving super fast and coming up to us being, you know, all showboaty. I was still able to get them sharp and in focus because the minimum focusing distance is that close if I need it. Not to mention some turtles that were right under a bridge and all sorts of things. And I didn't find that as much of a limitation. If there was any limitations that it's still a 400 and I still had to step back to get the uh, subject in frame. And don't forget you have this focus limiter switch here too as well. It has full or six meters to infinity. What that allows you to do is limit the actual travel of the elements instead of going all the whole range and maybe giving you a slower workflow or tricking the lens for whatever reason. You're able to work faster because if you're shooting long distances, you don't need it to be looking to focus closer anyway. So it's just another thing to customize your shooting experience if you're in a specific situation. All right, well, the zoo was fun and uh, we're in the Bronx. So Fernando, you know what that means. Italian food. Yeah, we're gonna go hit up Tino's, which is a really well-known deli here in the Bronx. And uh, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to this part. <laughs> One thing I did wanna mention is while I was pumping up that ISO a little bit, I was still able to take my shutter speeds down with this lens having vibration reduction working with the Z9's IBIS. So they say it's five and a half stops of stabilization, but I can definitely tell you I was shooting at way lower shutter speeds than I normally would at a focal length like 400. I mean, I easily was doing as low as 200 of a second for some shots. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about maybe something with higher resolution that you don't want to get the ISO to jump up too much, you know, slower shutter speeds. But keep in mind, shooting wildlife, you might want faster shutter speeds so you can freeze the action. So, you know, be a photographer, right? Pretty much. <laughs> for something sweet. So now that's done, what do you think about the lens? Uh, yeah, so this lens was pretty fun actually and what better place to take it than the zoo to check it out, right? Uh, here in New York for the crazy wildlife. <laughs> Listen, either that or try to find some sewer rats. I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> like there's no way to do it. Uh, look, it's a great lens and I think it's in a nice price bracket considering the other option to this lens is a 2.8 version that's $14,000 with a built-in teleconverter. This lens, a little over three grand, right? But 400 millimeter f4.5, and it can take the teleconverters if you wanted to add those on as well. So that's kind of an important thing you shouldn't overlook either if you're someone that's looking to get longer full lengths out of this. And don't forget, you can do DX or crop sensor mode in your camera as well if you want to mimic. I hate saying it's equivalent, but kind of mimic the crop of getting tighter in there with like a you know a 600. So if you're looking at this lens, take a, take a look at the links down below for all the full specs and all the you know the real actual data on it. If you have any questions about it, uh, hit me with a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer based on my experience here today. And don't forget to like, it really helps this video out and our channel and we really appreciate it. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when we put out more videos like this. And if you want more stuff in this vloggy style, let us know about that as well because we're kind of playing around with it. I don't know if you wanna, you know, yeah, see, can never get a straight answer out of this guy, so I need it from you guys. All right, but for now, my name is Seth Miranda, last ex-witness on all social. I want to thank Nikon for giving me a crack at this lens, and we'll see you guys next time. Later.